plein, 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 plein. Hello guys, how are you doing? I bring you another lore video on Bloodborne. I love this game, what can I do? And in this video I want to talk about the Ewing Church in its early stages. And I'm going to talk about the research hall. But before we start, I just want to remind some basic things about the game. To gain power and transcend the limits of our humanity in the universe of Bloodborne, there's basically two ways to go. One of them is the use of old blood that was discovered in the Kalis dungeons. And the other one it's acquiring insight by creating eyes in the inside, as stated by Master Willow. And we know that besides the members of the Ewing Church had parted their ways from Birkenworth and all the philosophy of the Ewing Church revolves around the use of old blood, we know that they hadn't forgot their roots in Birkenworth and they are aware of the ruins true importance as they contain and hide the very secrets of the old great ones. And so with the intent on continuing this research into the Eldritch truth, the research hall was created. The initial experiments performed there were deemed possible because of the events that happened in the fishing hamlet, the savagery that was performed in the inhabitants and also the discovery of the corpse of a great one. And we know that in the old days the great ones were associated with the ocean and the sea. So the initial experiments were related with forcing the patients to imbibe water. But this wasn't your normal day tap water, as you may know. And after looking at the brain fluid description that states grayish amoeba shaped brain fluid, wobbles and bounces, we can start to consider some possibilities. If you know the term amoeba, it's used to describe a cell or organism that's capable of altering their shape. So it's pretty obvious that the water that the patients were forced to imbibe was contaminated or mixed with parasites that were found in the corpse of cause. And we can also see a correlation here to the real life, because it exists a parasite called the Nagleria fowleri that it's also known as the brain-eating amoeba. And it's also curious that this parasite enters in your system through the nose when in contact with water. So now we know what the patients were forced to, but we also know that this didn't work out very well as the biggest part of the patient it's clearly insane and some patients have retained their consciousness but their mind has been clearly affected. However, this did not happen with Saint Adeline. We know that she was a blood saint from the healing church and that she was one of the few successful cases of experimentation with the cause parasites. And when looking at her dialogue, we can see that she asks to be baptized. I need my baptism. Please. And when looking at the definition of baptism, we can see that it's a religious ceremony where the person is immersed in the Holy Spirit, making the person a part of the spiritual body of Christ and initiating a new life in Christ. And in fact, we are pretty much doing ourselves a baptism as we are immersing Adeline in water, basically the brain fluid eats water, and we are deepening the connection with the outer cosmos, in this case with a god, a great one. And eventually, her mind becomes raptured and begins to integrate the celestial body of a great one. Which great one? I leave that for your consideration. But whatever the case was with Saint Adeline, we can infer that in the same way that we were able to trigger this event in the Hunter's Nightmare and obtaining the Milkweed Rune, a revelation from Saint Adeline, the researchers were also capable of doing this in their time with Saint Adeline or other patient. And what were the consequences of discovering the Milkweed Rune for the researchers? We know from the item description that etching this rune into your mind turns you into a Lumenhood, a celestial attendant capable of feeding phantasms. And to me, this meant that to the researchers, they were now capable of gathering a large quantity of phantasms to bolster their research. Phantasmas were initially discovered in the old labyrinths, and we know that they permit some kind of contact with the cosmos when you look at items like a call behind and Augur of Ebriatus. 
And when looking at the Japanese version of the milkweed rune, we see that appears translated as seedbed or nursery, which is a local soil environment in which seeds are planted. So grabbing this concept, it's kind of obvious that the researchers were trying to replicate the lumen woods in a larger scale and not depending on patients or even human beings. And to farm the phantasms, so to say, they began the plantation of sunflowers. But why sunflowers? There are some possible relations that point a connection between the sunflowers and the cosmos. Uh, and thanks to Azura Sand, to his translation effort, we know that in Japan the sunflowers are also called star flowers. We can see a connection here to the cosmos. And also, uh, the sunflower belongs to a family of plants known as Asteriaceae, where the word aster translates as star in Greek. Yet another connection. And if you would like to speculate a little, I like to think that the sunflowers, or as they are called in the game, the lumen flowers, were initially found in the nightmare frontier. There's a very particular space in, the, in that area with flowers that are very similar to the flowers that we find in the research hall, but it looks like they have bloomed. I think that's possible that when the Ealing Church was exploring the nightmare frontier, they found these plants and they noticed that they were uh, attracting phantasms. It's also interesting that in nature there aren't any plants that are capable of producing light. So it's interesting, maybe this could mean that there were living beings or organisms inside the flowers that were capable of producing light, as they aren't capable of doing that naturally, but this is just a theory. So to sum it up, we can see a chain of events here. After discovering the milkweed rune, patients that were exposed to the cause parasite and presented a good behavior were then placed in contact with the farmed phantasms, but after contacting with them, we know that they were now capable of reaching to the outer cosmos, creating a connection. But we know that this wasn't enough. We can see that by the name of the boss, the living failures and also all that we can see in that area. They were capable of reaching to the cosmos, bringing down bursts of energy and meteorites, but they were not capable of contacting, establishing a real connection with the Great One. And they were not also capable of ascending to a higher plane. The biggest advancements in their research began much later when they contact with Ibriatus, and it makes sense. They were fiddling with a corpse, with a carcass, trying to obtain results, but it's very different when we have the full cooperation of a living great one. So this is the end of the video about the research hall. Hope you liked it. Leave in the comments some theories of your own that you have about the research hall or some flaws in my own theories and speculation. This will be probably the last video that I do about the Bloodborne lore, at least this big. If I, I, I have some ideas about some minor stuff that I probably will do in the future. But stay tuned for more and I see you later.